Michael Thomas used to be the best pass catcher in the NFL. He was so good, he would rack up 100 yard games while being double teamed. Everyone said he was destined for greatness, but one day he was just gone. Before I tell you what happened to him though, I need to explain the rise of the most dangerous wide receiver in the league. Michael Thomas has always been a ridiculously talented athlete. In high school, he played both football and basketball for his school in Woodlands, California. On the field, he was a cheat code measuring in at 6'3 and weighing 200 pounds. As a senior, Michael led the entire state with 1,600 yards and 21 touchdowns. Shortly after graduating, he was given a full ride scholarship by Ohio State, but he had to fight for the position on the team. You see, the coaches didn't really have faith in Michael, so they placed him as a backup on their team knowing he had to step his game up. Michael went all out during practice and after impressing the coaches enough, he became the starter. He recorded 54 catches for 800 yards and 9 touchdowns as a sophomore. As a junior, Michael came back even stronger than his previous year and helped lead the Ohio State Buckeyes to a national championship victory over Oregon. After winning the college football finals, Michael announced his intention to enter the 2016 NFL Draft. For the next couple months, the young athlete was incredibly stressed. While he had an amazing track record from college, was he actually good enough to get drafted by an NFL team? The answer to that is, hell yes. Michael Thomas was drafted by the Saints in 2016 as the 47th overall pick. Going into the 2016 season, the Saints had one of the best receiver duos with Brandon Cooks and Michael Thomas. Michael would have a fantastic rookie year, catching 92 passes for 1,100 yards and catching 9 touchdowns. Things got better in his second year, especially since he was the number one receiver. You see, Brandon Cooks had been traded to New England, and Michael knew that this was his year to shine. He didn't miss a beat in his second year, recording 1,200 yards and 5 touchdowns, leading the Saints to a wildcard game where they beat the Panthers. They went on to play the Vikings in the divisional round, and the only reason they lost was because of a last-second 67-yard touchdown pass to Stephon Diggs, known as the Minneapolis Miracle. Although the Saints' loss broke Michael's heart, the entire league recognized his skill and voted him to play in the Pro Bowl. In 2018, Michael would come back stronger, leading the league in catches and racking up 1,400 yards and 9 touchdowns. The Saints once again would make it to the playoffs, this time making it all the way to the NFC Championship game facing the Rams. Michael's team was confident they could win, but a grave mistake cost the Saints the entire game. See, this game was known as the worst call in NFL history, where the refs missed an obvious pass interference. Once again, Saints fans were heartbroken, knowing that this time they got cheated from a Super Bowl appearance. But that didn't shake Michael up, as he worked even harder during the offseason and came back in 2019 with his best season ever. Michael put up record numbers in 2019, setting the single season record for most receptions and leading the league in receiving yards with 1,700. Michael was so dominant that the league named him the NFL Offensive Player of the Year. He was the first wide receiver to win this award since the legendary Jerry Rice. Things seemed like they could only go up, right? Unfortunately, this is where his career fell off a cliff. In week one of 2020, the Saints played the Buccaneers. Michael suffered a high ankle sprain. The injury lingered, forcing him to wait five whole weeks before getting back on the field. But before Michael could play the game, he was suspended by his own team for punching teammate and cornerback CJ Gardner Johnson. Apparently, a practice got heated, and when CJ made fun of Michael, calling him Slam Boy, Michael sucker punched him right in the face. Things got even worse when after he finally was allowed back on the field, his ankle was sprained yet again. This time it was serious. He had to be placed on injury reserve. Michael did his best to try and recover, but he just couldn't find a way to stay on the field in 2020. After losing to the Buccaneers in the playoffs, Michael Thomas decided to rest during the offseason so that his ankle would get back to normal. But after seeing that nothing was working, he got surgery two months before the season started. Not a smart move. The Saints told fans that Michael would return towards the second half of the 2021 season. But then a shocking message came out. Michael put out a statement saying that he wouldn't be able to play for the rest of the year. This could have easily been avoided if he had just gotten surgery earlier in the season. The Saints tried to trade him before the trade deadline in 2021, but no team wanted to give up a first round pick for a potentially washed player who wouldn't even be able to play until the next season. Personally, I think he'll come back strong in 2022. He's only 28, so he's very much still in his prime. Plus, he'll be back with James Winston, who is known for throwing the ball deep and taking chances. I guess you could say this is only a temporary dip in his career. I guarantee that a day in his life right now is full of ankle therapy and training for the 2022 season. Speaking of a day in the life, click here to see a day in the life of Sean McVay.